So, so far we've discussed different combination logic components that can perform different operations on sets of inputs. Things like adders and subtractors, uh, bitwise operations such as ands, ors, nots, uh, as well as digital comparison which can check for equality greater than or less than conditions. However, what if you wanted a single circuit that could perform all of these functions depending on a function input? Well, that's where the arithmetic logic unit comes in, or just ALU for short. Now, defining what an ALU is specifically is a little bit difficult because it can change depending on the type of functions and flags that you provide with your ALU. But generally speaking, an ALU will always have a few different things. If we draw this out in schematic form, it looks very similar to the adder. Um, but it's always going to have two inputs, or more. It could have more, but usually it's two, inputs A and B. Um, you are going to have your output. You're going to have what is referred to as the function input. And we'll just call it function for now. Um, so the function input will determine what function the ALU is performing with inputs A and B. And that output, of course, will be put on Q. In fact, I'll go ahead and label these as well. Um, but then the last thing that an ALU has that makes it distinct from you know, other logic circuits um, is a secondary output referred to as flags. Now, what are flags? Flags are basically just auxiliary information about the output Q. Um, for example, if you perform subtraction, um, the output will be A minus B. But you may have some auxiliary information about that, such as are, is A and B equal? Did the results equal zero? In which case, the flags are going to behave very similar to a digital comparator. In fact, you could have the greater than and less than flags on the output as well. There's a whole bunch of different flags that you can have on an ALU. Things like equality, greater than, less than. Um, with the adder subtractor circuit in there, there's obviously going to be a carry out on the output of the adder. You could actually add that to the flags. There's other flags such as uh, overflow and underflow condition flags, which is when uh, the output either goes too big or too small and it overflows or underflows the register. Um, you can have a flag that detects that as well. There's all kinds of different flags that you can have in an ALU. Um, you're not limited to just whatever is on a digital comparator. Likewise with functions, you know, your general basic one is probably going to include all of this, but you can have a ton of different functions on an ALU. You can have rotate left, rotate right, shift left, shift right. You can have multiply and divide. Um, if you want to have floating point operations, you could do that as well, although we're not quite at the point where we're dealing with floating point at this point. So again, there's no limit to the type of functions your ALU can have. For the sake of this video, though, we're just going to be sticking with the basics. That's going to be shift left, shift right, add, subtract, your logic operations, and then digital comparison. Now, you might think if an ALU is basically just the summation of a bunch of different uh, simpler logic functions, you could probably build it just by taking those logic functions or those logic circuits and combining them together through a MUX um, gate to combine them into a single output. And you can definitely do that. There's no rule saying that you can't do that. However, I do have a method that produces a circuit that's a lot smaller and uses a lot less logic gates. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to show you. And it all starts with a simple adder circuit. Now, what we're looking at here is a single bit full adder circuit here. You can see the half adder here, the other half adder here, and then the two carries uh, signals come together in this OR gate. Um, what we're looking at, though, is just a single bit. Um, this would be considered bit n, so it would take inputs a n and b n. Um, if we go further up the circuit, we can see that there is the same circuit for n minus 1. Further down, we have n plus 1. So the idea here is that this is a single slice of a bigger circuit, and this circuit basically just copy-pastes along all the bits. So. For the circuit n minus 1, it would have its own carry out that would connect to the carry in of circuit n. Likewise, circuit n's carry out would connect to the carry in of circuit n plus 1. Basically, all you need to know is that any lines going across is its own bit or its own set of bits. Any line going vertically is going to span all the bits segments themselves. But I'm showing you this here because what we're basically going to do is we're going to take this circuit right here and we're going to modify it to include all sorts of different functions, such as logic and, logic XOR, logic OR, logic NOT, uh, shift left, shift right, as well as digital comparison. And so first thing we should probably do, though, is take this adder circuit and give it the ability to subtract. 
uh, if you recall back to digital subtraction, in order to turn a digital adder into a digital subtractor, all you need to do is just invert the B input and add one to the carry. And so here's where we would add our first control line. We have this invert B signal. Now this wire, like I said, because it's vertical, it spans all slices of the circuits here. So this copy of the circuit for N minus one and N plus one, this line would basically just pass right through. So for each slice of the circuit, the B input is going to be inverted using this X or gate, uh, so long as the invert B line is on. Again, turning on the invert B and then adding the carry in to the, to the lowest significant bit uh, circuit, that creates a subtraction circuit. And so the next step to transforming this adder circuit into our ALU would then be to add our logic circuits. Now, logic, again, in the bitwise sense, is just going to be some kind of a logic operation between inputs A and B, either AND, OR, NOT, or exclusive OR. Um, we can actually get away with just AND and exclusive OR, though. The reason why is because if we look at the truth tables for both A and B and A X or B, um, you'll notice that with A and B, it's only ever on when both inputs A and B are on, and A X or B is only on when it's A or B, but not both. Um, if we combine the two together, meaning if we OR these two together, we actually get the truth table for an OR gate. And so what we can do is if we have both A and B going to an AND gate and an XOR gate, we can just OR the two together. And that would create our OR gate. Likewise, if we wanted to create a NOT gate, say we wanted to NOT A, well, if you'll notice, we have this B input here that if we turn to a 1 and then look at the XOR output actually becomes the inverse of A. So if we can... Uh, give the B input a constant 1, we can just use the XOR output. And of course, so long as B is a 0, we can actually get a constant 1 using an exclusive OR gate. And so just by adding an OR gate to the output of an AND and an XOR gate, as well as the optional inverter on the B input, we can get all four logic operations with a very simple circuit. Now the reason why I chose to do it like this Hopefully it's obvious to you because this circuit should look familiar. And that's because we've already got most of the circuit already in our adder circuit. We've got the XOR gate, we've got the AND gate, and we've got another XOR gate inverting the B input. All we need to do is control which one of these outputs we get, as well as create a third one that's an OR between these two, and we've got our logic operations. And this is where things will get a little bit tricky because what we need to do is we need to optionally control when we get the XOR output, optionally control when we get the AND output, and more importantly, optionally control when we get the, the, the sum out output. Uh, and the reason why is because all of this is gonna, gonna come together in the QN output. We don't want both XOR and sum. We don't want both AND and sum. And you know, we may want um, XOR and AND, but we wanna be able to choose when that happens. So. What we need to do is we need to control the output of all three of these circuits, and we can do that with a couple control lines and AND gates. And so what I've done here is I've added three more control lines. You've got an XOR line, an AND line, and a SUM line. And if you look closely, you can see that the XOR line basically just controls an AND gate between itself and the XOR gate. Uh, the AND line controls a, another AND gate uh, between that and the AND gate output. And then the sum line just controls a third AND gate that just controls the sum output. And then all three of those AND gates just come together in an OR gate. And so if we want the sum output, all we have to do is just enable the, the sum line, and we will get the output of the sum circuit. Likewise, if we want to get the AND output, all we have to do is enable the AND line. Um, that will send the output of the AND gate through this line to the output. Same thing with the XOR, through this AND gate to the output. If we want OR, however, we enable both XOR and AND, and that will, again, combine the two together in this last OR gate uh, and produce an OR output. And then lastly, if we want to do inversion, all we have to do is enable um, invert B, so long as there's nothing on input B, and then just enable the XOR output. Um, that will, of course, invert A. You could also do um, invert B just by sending the input on the B input. The same, uh, the same control setup will work for both. It doesn't really matter which one you do though, because inversion is a unary operation. So just pick an input, it'll work for either one. 
And so with that, we're just about done with this circuit here. The only thing we need to add now is just the digital comparison circuit and the shift circuit. So we right now we don't have shift left or shift right, um, but in actuality, we do have shift left. Because if you recall back to the shift uh, videos, you'll know that shift left is basically just adding an input to itself. So if we take the same input, we put it on both inputs A and inputs B, and then enable the sum output, we will get the same input shifted one bit to the left. However, the same trick does not apply to shifting to the right. We need to add some extra circuitry in order to do that. So what we need to do is we need to take our A input and send it to the previous circuit slice. And then at the same time, take the A input from the next circuit slice and bring it into the A input. And what that will do is that will effectively shift it one to the right. Again, this A bit is gonna go over here, the one from over here is going to come over here. And if you look, since carry is going from n to n plus 1, this is going to be going against the carry. So it will be a shift right. And so to implement that, all I've done is I've just added another control line. This is the shift right control line. And all that does is connect to another AND gate that is connected to a the, the A input. So when shift right is enabled, the A input is going to be diverted through this AND gate into the A and output, and that's going to go to the previous uh, circuit slice. From the next circuit slice, however, the same out, uh, input, I guess, input A of N plus 1, is going to be passed into our N circuit here, and that's just going to go straight to the output. And so the end result is Q of N is going to be equal to A of N plus 1, and then Q of n minus 1 is going to be equal to A of n. The end result is the A input gets shifted one bit to the right. And so that's basically every modification we're going to be making to this adder circuit in order to create our ALU. Um, we have a circuit that enables us to both add, add uh, and subtract. Um, because we have a carry in, we can add with a carry or subtract with a borrow. Um, we can increment, we can decrement, we can and or XOR not. Um, we can shift to the right and we can shift to the left. Um, but that doesn't explain how we're able to do bitwise comparisons, such as checking for equality less than or greater than conditions. Well, in order to actually implement that, we can't really modify the circuit anymore. We have to move one layer up. And that is over to where we actually put all this together. So here we can see a 1-bit ALU. We've basically got four of them for uh, inputs uh, A0, B0, A1, B1, A2, B2, and so on and so forth. The carry propagates through all four of the 1-bit circuits. Um, the A shifting propagates in reverse order through all of the 1-bit the uh, circuits. And then we have the function lines, which just get passed to all of these circuits themselves. So um, this is basically going to perform most of our operations. Again, depending on the function, we can perform add, subtract, logic operations, and shifting operations. But if we want to perform digital comparisons, such as equality, less than, or greater than, we have to modify this layer right here. Now, if we think back to the alternative uh, digital comparison circuit, we know that we can take a subtraction circuit, we could turn it into a digital comparison circuit simply by modifying the output a little bit. And if we look at these one-bit ALUs, we know that we can perform subtraction. So we do actually have a subtraction circuit, which means we can take the same modifications we made to the subtraction circuit and apply it here. And so what we can do is we can first create a zero flag here, um, which again acts as our equality flag, simply by taking all of the outputs and running it through a NOR gate. And so, so long as all these bits are off, we know that the output is a zero, this output will be on and it will indicate that the output is equal to zero. Likewise, we can check for less than conditions simply by taking a look at the sign bit. Remember, when performing subtraction, if A is less than B, the output is going to be a negative number. So, simply by tapping off the sign bit of our output, we can create a negative flag. And then, of course, our greater than flag can simply be made by assuming it's greater than if it is not zero and not negative. And then again, as I mentioned before, your flags on your ALU can be pretty much anything they want. Zero, greater than, and negative, those are pretty common flags. Uh, another common flag, though, is the carry flag. 
Now, why is the carry flag a common flag on most ALUs? That actually has to do more with computer architecture than what is uh, than what is in the scope of this video. So um, you don't necessarily have to have a carry output if you're just using an ALU as just sort of a general purpose logic circuit. Um, but in the context of computational redstone, having a carry flag is actually really helpful. And yeah, that's basically all we have to do here. Simply by taking an outer circuit and modifying it a little bit, we can create a pretty powerful ALU that can do all sorts of things. Now, again, this isn't the definitive way to make an ALU. There are many ways of making ALUs with many different functions and many different flags. It's up to you if you decide to create your own and how you want to create it. This is more just a general purpose ALU that'll get you going simply because it's pretty easy to get set up, it's easy to understand, and it has most of the functions that you'll probably need. That said, I did compile a table of all the functions that this ALU can perform, as well as uh, what the state of their control bits are in order to perform that operation. And I've counted 14 functions that this ALU can perform. We can do add, add plus carry, subtract, subtract plus carry. We can complement, increment, decrement. We can do the logic operations. We can do the shift operations, and we can perform comparison. And so if we look at this table, we can see what the inputs have to be in order to create that sort of output and what exactly the, the Q output and the flags output will be when we perform those operations. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing you have to concern yourself with is, um, I guess, the carry input. Um, most of the time it's zero. Sometimes it's a one when we need to introduce a constant one, such as in complement or increment. Um, but sometimes it's uh, just a C. And in those situations, um, it can be either a one or a zero. In, and in that case, it'll just be uh, taken into account when it comes to performing the operation. For example, add plus carry, it's gonna be equal to A plus B plus C. So that's basically just gonna be your add input plus one if you have a one on the carry. Likewise, the inputs A and B are basically just going to be whatever inputs A and B are, unless it's a dash, in which case, in which case we're just dealing with a unary operation. And the only exception is the shift left operation, which as I said, in order to perform a shift left operation on this thing, you have to take the A input and put it on both inputs. So you can see A is both in column A and column B. And then from there, if you just enable the sum, your output is going to be equal to a shift to the left one bit. There are, of course, other optimizations that you can perform. For example, if you don't care to have your invert or your shift circuit or anything like that, you can just have a basic ALU that has XOR, AND, and SUM. And what you can do is you can actually set the SUM to be equal to the NOR of the XOR and AND. And what that will do is it will uh, produce an AND output when there's a 1 on the AND or when there's two ones, uh, XOR when there's a 1 on the XOR input. And if neither one of these are on, it'll just default to sum. And that can save you on a few control bits instead of having, how many is this, five, six, six control bits, you would just need two. Like I said, there's many different ways that you can optimize or change or modify or customize this ALU to your liking, or you don't even have to use it all. Like I said, you can design your own. It's not particularly difficult. But as I said before, this is just a basic ALU that's designed to be simple enough to construct, easy to understand and good enough to get you going.